Hey, good morning, church. It is a happy day. It is Christmas Eve. I'm sure all of you all know, if you are watching this stream, if you're fellowshipping up with us right now, then you know that the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. So you know that tomorrow we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And because we celebrate our Lord and Savior, it's not about buying gifts. It's not about how many presents are under the tree. It's not about how many lights you have up around your house. It's really just about celebrating. But of course, in the culture we live in, everybody wants a gift. Everybody wants a gift. And I found myself privy to a gift that uh, I really wanted. See, when I grew up, I always wanted, you know, all of the fancy shoes and Jordans because my daddy had a closet full of shoes. Now, they weren't Jordans and all that, but it was a closet full of very nice shoes. And everybody wanted shoes, especially Jordans. They had Bo Jackson's, you had Air Max. You know, I'm an 80s baby, so I grew up with the, the original Jordans. It wasn't retros. It was the original. So I told my brother that, I want to get these Jordans that was coming out. They were the 11s. They're called the Gratitudes. And it's almost like it was showing appreciation to the fans who had already, uh, you know, who had just been rocking with Jordan this whole time. I said, I'm going to get these. He said, man, I, I hate to tell you, man, but you ain't getting them shoes. And I said, wait, wait, how do I? He said, the game has changed. You don't just go into the store and buy shoes. Like, it don't work like that no more. You got to get on the apps and you got to know when they drop. You got to be in line. You got to be on there and don't press the button too quick. And I said, man, that's just, that's a lot to get some shoes. He said, well, how bad you want them? I want them. So, what ended up happening is, he was right. I wasn't able to get them the way I thought I would get them because, of course, they sold out. But he sent me a message. He said, well, actually, he called me and said, hey, Ann, I need you to send me $250 right now. I said, well, what you mean $250? I got the shoes. I, I got them. I got an exclusive drop. And all you got to do is send me the 250 for the shoes. And I said, man, I'm thinking in the back of my head, it sounds like a scam. He's about to scam me. He about to take my 250 and then tell me that it didn't work or it got caught up in cash out. I said, you know what? I'm gonna give him this money, right? So I sent him the money. He sent me the receipt saying that he got him. He said, I didn't bring him up to you. I was excited. I'm telling you because I mean, it was just a pair that it, it was kind of like a, a gift to myself, a birthday gift, a Christmas gift. You know, it, it was just, it, it, it was a gift to myself. So he brought them up, and, and, I, and I'll show them to you. I'll show them to you here. We got a, uh, and these were the Jordan 11. That's why I got a set of white. Here we go. Patent leather, black. You know, the white leather, just it just feels good. It is a nice, heavy shoe, kind of just for the culture. This is the shoe that I wanted, and I got it. But then I ain't know what to do with it. Uh, so now that I have this shoe, now that I have this shoe, I mean, what can I do with it? I, I don't want to wear it and mess the shoe up. I, I don't want to uh, have the shoe and get it dirty or because I want to value the shoe. You know, when you care about something, you take care of it. When you value it, you take care of it. So I really want to wear them to school. But I said, I can't risk wearing these shoes to school? What if I mess them up? What if somebody step on my shoe and then I'm at the school acting like the kids ready, you know, all mad about a material item. So what I decided to do was, I had another pair of shoes that was similar to them. Yeah, here they are, I'm gonna get these out. So I had these, right? I said, well, close enough. You got the leather up top, you got the black pad leather, you got the Jordan side, they are Jordans. They ain't got quite gratitudes, but they are Jordans. I said, I'm just gonna rock these. So I start wearing these and you know, I said, well, this should be good enough. And I'm gonna wear these until I'm ready to, you know, I had a moment to rock my my other ones, that the the other pair, you know, the, the pair that came from, you know, the drop. So 
I'm warm and a warm and pee. I'm playing basketball. I'm I'm whooping there. But I mean, I felt like I was Jordan himself. Step back threes, fadeaways. I don't know if I stuck my tongue out or not, but I was out there playing. I was balling. So then we got to basketball practice and. You know, at the end of the practice, you know, we hadn't been doing so well this year. It's a struggling year. Got some great kids, and they're learning how to play basketball. So I told them, I said, uh, hey, y'all like my, my gratitudes? And, you know, they were in the huddle, and they just sat there, and they, you know, kind of smirked a little bit. I said, what, y'all y'all like my – I got the, the early drop on these. And then one of the guys, the senior, he said, coach, that ain't them. And, and it's just he just said, that ain't them. I said, what? What you mean? He said, that ain't them. I mean, I, they look, I'm not telling you your shoes don't look good, but those aren't the 11 gratitudes. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, they're similar, but they're not authentic. That's not the shoe that was released. And I said, oh, okay. So how is it that you know? He said, when you know what you're looking at, then you know what you're looking at. So I'm thinking to myself, I got this shoe. And let me get the real one out. Once again. And I got this shoe. I'm thinking, they're close. But in reality, he was right. Just because they're close does not mean they're the same thing. Black insole, patent leather, steel patent leather, both of them are Jordans. But this is the real deal. And I think... Uh, as I go into my message today, it's a uh, it's an understanding that we have to have. We can't fake being a Christian. We can't fake our spiritual walk. Yeah, we can put on and we can come to church and clap and sing and cry and fall out, and we can dance and you know we can have worship. But you can't fake an authentic relationship with Christ. You can't. Because God knows what he sees, what he sees. Just like that player said, that ain't it. So we can fake it for people, but when it comes to God, like, that ain't it. I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll point you right out. That ain't it. And my text today comes from Chapter 19, verse 11 through 16, and this is Acts 19, verses 11 through 16, and then we'll pray. But this is Acts, chapter 19, verse 11 through 16, I'll read it. It said, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went out and went around driving out evil spirit tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus who were de over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. The seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, were doing this. Verse 15 says, one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, Paul I know about, but who are you? It's like, Jesus I know, Paul I know, I know about Paul, and I know Jesus, but, but who are you? Who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out the house naked and believed Let's pray. God, I thank you for this preaching and teaching moment. I thank you for this opportunity to speak your word. God, help us be, just, just to develop a true relationship with you. Help us to, you know, put put aside our, our thoughts and whatever's going on in our minds so that we can hear clearly from you. Jesus, I invite you into this moment and ask that you bless it and ordain it. In your son Jesus, in my name we pray, amen. So the title of my message today, for the next few five minutes, is something ain't right. Something ain't right. 
and, and that's what is uh what's happening when we're looking at our current situation when we're looking at our relationship with Christ and God is just saying something ain't right I, I see it and, and it looked like the real deal from the outside but then when I investigate I realize that it's not it's not it that's just, just that's not it God said he's coming back for a church without blemish and he looked and said now nah, that ain't it see somebody who know what they're looking at can quickly spot it out that ain't it. But I'm going to give you some uh, some tools that that you all need and we all need as we take this journey called Christianity. See, it's not a destination. Don't think that once you get to some level of power and you, you know, you're in front of a stage and you've made it. You haven't. Being a Christian is a journey. It's, it's all about your walk with Christ. So I'm going to give you... Uh, Three things that you're going to need. You, me, we, all of us on this journey called Christianity. The first thing you need is you need an authentic relationship with God. Authentic. You need an authentic relationship with God. Authentic means that it's not false or copied. It has real origin and there should be unquestionable evidence. It should be verified. The relationship is the way two people are connected. So if you put it together, the way you and God are connected should not be copied. That means it's not going to be like somebody else. It should not be, you know, uh, something that you saw. Oh, uh, I got to pray like this. No. It needs to be genuine. It needs to have unquestionable evidence. Your relationship with God needs to have unquestionable evidence. Like, you gonna know. When you know, you know, you know, people are like, I know it's God. When you know, you know, you know. How do I know, you know, that God loves me? When he pull you out some of these things, you know it's God. Verse 11 said, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. Don't think because you see God doing miracles through somebody else that he going to do them through you as well. You need an authentic relationship with Christ. Don't go out there trying to mimic somebody else. That's the worst thing that we can do as Christians. We, we see somebody praying and we try to mimic the way they pray. As a pastor, you see somebody preaching, you say, I got to, my style got to be just like their style. That's the hardest thing as a pastor is listen to somebody else's message, but staying true to yourself. Because God called you to who God called you to. So you got to be real with yourself. You need to understand that an authentic relationship with God is that that is like, that's the basis of all of this. You know, as you grow and you mature, you say, how do I, how do I get an authentic relationship with God? How do you get a relationship with anybody? You got to spend time with him. You spend time in his word. You spend time in prayer. You just spend time, you know, just focusing on the goodness of God. That is the only way that you're going to nurture this relationship. If you want an authentic relationship with him, you got to spend time with him. Don't think that you're not going to spend time with God. and He's just going to sit there and y'all going to grow together. It don't work like that. So the first thing you need to know or you need to have in your bag, in your, in your carry-on luggage, or whatever you call it on this journey, is an authentic relationship with God. The second thing you need is awareness of the enemy's tactics. Awareness is understanding that something does exist. And a tactic is a strategy to, to achieve a specific end. So you need to first understand that something exists. And you need to understand that the enemy exists. When you are aware that the enemy exists and that he has a goal or a plan to take you out, then you won't do certain things. You won't play with the devil. You won't go over there. I'm going to go on this date. I'm going to go to, to her house. I'm going to go to his house. It's going to be three in the morning. I know I'm going to be tired. I'm going to go over there anyway. 
you you playing yourself. You playing with the devil. You're not gonna sprinkle this salt. You're not gonna do this sage. You're not even gonna do some of the things that we're out here doing because you say, you know what? The enemy's real. Demons are real, and I'm not gonna play with them. Like, don't play with it. Don't let. Like, don't even play with it. There's certain things in my house we just don't do. Certain certain words we don't say because it's like, why? Why are we even playing like that? We're not even gonna do that. Verse 15 said. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? So when you know that the spirits are real, you stop doing all that. Next thing you need to understand is that you can have a conversation with a demon. It said that the demon answered the man. It was seven of them. So, okay, wait. It, it didn't say that the demon possessed man answered. It said that the demons answered the man. Paul, I know of Jesus, I know. But who are you? So you realize you can actually have a conversation with a demon. Get, like, stop, don't make this Bible spooky. You can sit here and have a conversation with a demon. You could be having a whole conversation, communicating with a demon. And then something else told me this. And, and, and I've read this so many times, but I didn't get it. Not only can you have a conversation with the demon, but the demons also have conversations with each other. And that's how they plan to take you out, because they communicate with each other. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, it says that Jesus I know. Paul I know of. How can a demon know of Paul? He said he knew Jesus, but he only knew of Paul. If he knew of Paul and of Jesus, he would have just used of the whole time. But he said, I know Jesus. That means I've had an encounter with Jesus, but I only know of Paul. That means somebody has to tell this demon about Paul. It's like, I've been warned about Jesus. Don't mess with Jesus. Don't mess with Paul. Paul, Paul, you know, mm, Paul put something on you. So that means these demons who plan to take you out or have a conversation with each other say, okay, if lust don't get you, alcoholism will. Okay, addiction, we, we'll get you over there. How about gambling? Hey, gambling, I need you to come over here and handle some business. Then you go talk to Larry. Larry, Larry, yeah, go on over there. What about, okay, he'll, uh, hey, uh, anger, go. They aim or they talk to him because all you got to do is get on there and, you know, he'll cut somebody out. They, they have conversations. Understand the enemy has a tactic and you got to be aware of the enemy's tactics. First thing you got to do is have a relationship and authentic, have your own relationship with God. After you do that, you need to be aware that the enemy has tactics and be aware of those tactics. A, be aware that enemy's real. B, that they will talk to you and they will talk to each other. They will do whatever it takes to take you out. The last thing you need is anointing prior to access. You need to have anointing, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer that will enable you to have a spiritual connection. So you need to be anointed for something before you start doing it. Verse 16 said, the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out the house naked and bleed. They didn't have no reason to be trying to go around casting out demons. Like, they didn't have a reason to be doing that. Sometimes you ain't anointed for something and you go trying to do it. Oh, I'm gifted at singing. I'm gifted at speaking. So let me try to go in and be a pastor. I can sing them and I can speak them. If you ain't anointed to do that and you go out there, and you think you for the pastor? And then them demons start jumping and whipping your butt and leave you out there running out that house naked? Good luck. Good luck. 
If you're not anointed for something, don't try to do it. You need to have anointing prior before accessing it. Before you jump in that water, be anointed. Here's something that caught me as well. It wasn't the spirits that whooped the man. It said that the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them. Oh, like it, he whooped all seven of them. So the spirits doing all the talking, the, the demons, they having the conversations, they do the setup, and then they let you do the trouble. They don't let you go out and do the crime. That's how that's how they work. That's the tactic. So then they back off and they go on to their next victim and mess somebody else's life up. But the sons of Skiba had no business is going even in there. It didn't say that they walked by and like, hey, devil, come on out the house. They so dumb, they went into the house. It said that they ran out the house. Why was you even in the house? See, the enemy wants to get you behind closed doors. The enemy wants to get you in a place that he's comfortable. He's going to trick you to come on in, come on in. And once you close that door, he's going to wear your butt out. How many of y'all have ever been wear, worn out by a demon? You know you weren't supposed to be dealing with this. You know you weren't anointed for that. You went in there, you had to, like, you developed a relationship that you shouldn't have, and it kicked your butt trying to get out of it. You lost so much. You lost friends, you lost relationships, you lost yourself, and now you're trying to get out of it. So why was you even in there? i tell you why they went in there. Because it said they were the sons of Sceva. Sceva was a chief priest. That means Sceva, Sceva, he had access to the Holy of Holies. He was one of the priests that were higher up. Like he was the pretty much, he was one of the leaders in, in the faith, in the community. So what they did, they saw their daddy doing something. They said, well, daddy doing this. Daddy's anointed. But they don't know what their daddy did to get there. So you out here, you watching somebody that you connected to do something, and you think you can do it too. It don't work that way. That ain't the way it works. So they felt like they can go and carry on like their daddy. But see, them demons, they already knew, ooh, ooh, this, that's Kiva, son. I, I can get all of them. See, the devil know who you are. And the devil wants you to go in there half with it, not prepared, not anointed. He don't want you to be patient. He wants you to ask for your inheritance now so you can squander it away with the pigs. Don't run into that house. Don't start that business. Don't start that ministry. Don't start that relationship. Don't go trying to lay hands on de demons, casting out spirits. Don't go into places that you know you're not anointed for, talking about you doing God's work, or you will be overcome by the devil, and you will find yourself running out naked and bleeding. Lady Max said when she thinks about running out the house naked, she sees it as being exposed. So you, you, you're not anointed for something, and you jumped into it, and now you're being exposed to the world. And it's going to make the whole faith look bad. You know you weren't ready for that. Now let's go back over these points. Before you go into something, and as you start this journey called Christianity, you're going to need three things. You're going to need an authentic relationship with Christ. What else are you going to need? You're going to need awareness of the enemy's tactics and you're going to need anointing before access. Make sure you know God for yourself. Make sure you know that the enemy is out to get you and make sure you're anointed before you start something great because I don't want you to mess it up and God has a plan for your life. Just be patient with the plan. Trust the process, okay? Let's pray. God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of our people. I pray now for those who don't know you, those who want to get to know you, who are not saved, that they would confess their sins right now and they will call out on your name and that you fill their heart, God. Let them believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. 
And once they believe, they're saved. And the name will be written in the book of life. God, right now, I pray for those who want an authentic relationship with you. I pray for those who may have been struggling and not understanding that the devil has a plan to get them. And they've just been living life and just, just carelessly. I also pray for those who started things and weren't anointed for it. God, I ask that you protect them and me. Protect us, Lord. Cover us and keep us. I ask that you keep us this week coming up, God. And we, we just want to say happy birthday to your son, Jesus Christ. So, God, we love you, we honor you, we praise your name. In your son, Jesus, my name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. I hope that you enjoy today. I hope you enjoy Christmas. I hope you get everything that you want. And I hope you're able to give what the Lord has put on your heart to give. God bless you. This is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. I challenge you to win the 97% and be the ram of someone's life. God loves you, so do I. That's it. That's all. And goodbye.